and our way to a wonderful life message for today is titled, Identify with the Mind Power of Jesus. Identify with the Mind Power of Jesus. And we can read in the Gospel of John, You believe in God, believe also me. You believe in God, believe also me. And Jesus is always telling people to believe in the works that I do. Because the words that are said about me, the words that are written about me, can be changed and rearranged. And once those words are in the, in the minds of people, everyone interprets those words or translates those words into what their consciousness understands and perceives those words to mean. So concentrate on my works, he said. Believe in my works and know that through this, through this power of my mind, connected with the power of the infinite, connected with the power, the intelligence, and the spirit of God, these things I do and greater things you can do too. Greater things than you've done before. Just open your mind to God intelligence. Open your mind to God power. Open your mind to the spirit of God and let God bring into your mind a greater awareness, a greater, a greater elevation of thinking. Elevate your thought into the the consciousness that God has an idea for you, a solution for you, that God has a way for every problem to be solved. We can't solve a problem at the level of the problem. We must look up and not down. Don't look at the problem. Look up. You're not looking up to God, but you're freeing your mind from the material effects that can disturb you. Look up and know that God is with you right where you are, that God is the answer always god is the answer always god has the answer for you just open your mind to receive it open your mind to be aware of it open your mind so it can be revealed to you i have some wonderful words here this morning from the mystical ernest holmes <clears throat> this is from his book living the science of mind and spirit he says we are individual points in the consciousness of god or the original creative spirit of the universe we are points where it thinks through us, as us, or as we can say, God as man, in man, is man. But God as mankind, is mankind, as mankind, we could say, because women are included. But the, God that is, but the God that is in us is the same God that is universal. There is no wall of separation, no barrier, no place where one begins and the other leaves off. All is one and one is all. The creativity of thought is not dependent upon the thinker. Only the choice of thinking is dependent on the thinker. The creative activity of thought belongs to the universe. If we had to make things happen or push our thought out or influence or dominate and beat down the opposition, we should be faced with an impossible task. We never try to coerce anything in dealing with the laws of nature one of the things we must come to understand in dealing with the laws of the spirit is that we are still operating in a realm of law and order, in a realm of law and order. That's why Jesus said, the law is it's done unto you as you believe. That's a spiritual law. That law is just as absolute as two times two equals four in, in mathematics. It's a mathematical law. It seems almost too incredible to most people that God thinks through us Yet, if we look at the way in which ideas and communications are shared, we realize that there truly is only one intelligence that permeates life. Humans communicate with each other even when we don't speak each other's language. Humans communicate with animals and birds and other forms of life as well. This is because this intelligence that permeates all of life makes this possible. Even though humans communicate with all these forms of life, most people only believe that certain saints or mystics or deities can communicate with the one that makes all this possible, and that is God. The mastermind Jesus' communication with God gave us an open invitation to do the same. We can all communicate with God. We just must be open to it and believe in ourselves. As the mastermind Jesus stated, you believe in God, Believe also me. Believe me when I tell you to go into the closet, shut out all the noise and nonsense of the world, and that closet needs to go into a place where it's quiet so that you can sit in the stillness and still your mind so that God can move through your intuitive mind 
to bring you the ideas, to bring you the thoughts, to bring you the images, to bring you the insight into whatever it is that you need to know, to do, to be, and to have those things that you desire to do. Jesus wasn't referring to himself personally, but he was speaking to the universal in all of us. Now, most theologians will disagree with me, but like the architect of most of the New Testament, they too want to foster religion, while the mastermind Jesus was instead teaching us to develop our consciousness or our conscious awareness of God's presence in our lives and gain a greater understanding that this awareness, this awareness of our relationship with the infinite is powerful. Each of us can say, I believe in me, and this will be the truth for us. I believe in me, and this will be the truth for us soon enough as we impress this upon our consciousness. But to say, to, to, but to say that someone who does not believe in Jesus cannot use the same spiritual laws that Jesus used would be nonsense. These laws are available to all and to all alike, just like the laws of gravity and electricity, the principles of mathematics. God is no respecter of persons and favors no one. It's up to us. It's up to us to choose God. And when we read in the ancient scriptures, where the Jewish people were called the chosen people, it wasn't because God chose them. It was because they chose God. And we can all choose God to a greater degree in our life and a greater way in our life and to a greater measure in our life. And as we choose God, we're choosing the good and we're choosing that greater good, that greater thing still that we have yet to do to be or to have. Jesus said, it rains on the good and the bad alike, the just and the unjust, the pious and the pagan, he could have said, the atheist and the Christian, the atheist and the Presbyterian, the atheist and the Catholic, the atheist and the whatever religious person it may be, God is no respecter of persons. It does not take much study of the teachings of Jesus to understand that Jesus was outstanding, outstanding in his demonstration of truth and in his works. But that's why he said, look to my works. Don't look to the words that are written about me. Don't look to the words that are said about me. Look to my works and follow me in demonstrating those works. Follow me in looking to God for everything. Follow me in understanding that God is all in all. Follow me in understanding that there's only one power. That power is God. There's only one intelligence. That intelligence is God. There's only one spirit. That spirit is God. And that spirit, the image and likeness of it, is individualized within each and every one of us. And it becomes powerful. And it becomes more intelligent, more aware of its place in the universe, the more we look to God. We look to God. Jesus believed in himself more than others, and this belief in himself translated into a greater belief in God than other people. He accepted what he believed his purpose to be and never wavered in that which he was called to do to demonstrate it. And this, too, sets him apart from those of us who are still so influenced by the race mind most importantly, Jesus rarely ever forgot that he was totally dependent on God, totally dependent on the power of the Spirit of God. He said, the Father is Spirit, and we must worship him, love him, trust in him, depend on him, look to him in spirit and in truth, in spirit and in truth. We must always remember and never forget that those of a lesser faith than Jesus authored the scriptures that detailed his life experiences. They they may have witnessed some of the things, or they have followed the, the beliefs and the, the words and the writings of people who, who witnessed some of his works, but they did not have the consciousness of Jesus, so therefore they couldn't write to that mastermind that Jesus had, that mastermind that Jesus was. They could only translate and interpret to the level of their own understanding. And Jesus spoke the language... His, his native language was Aramaic, a language that was foreign to those who wrote the scriptures, which provided an even greater opportunity to interpret rather than translate the words attributed to him. So I believe that when the mastermind Jesus broke the Sabbath, it was a significant event and that it was evidence of his break with religion and religious dogma. And from that point on, to use a contemporary phrase, he was spiritual, but not religious. He realized and identified with the truth that God's love and God's law is available to everyone, and that means to you and me, 
And these laws are universal. They're for everyone, just like the laws of nature. Jesus said, look, look to nature. Look to the lilies. To see the lilies, how they grow? How do they grow? They grow intelligently. There's an intelligence within that seed that's planted in fertile soil that grew that plant. And that plant knows its purpose. It knows what it's to do. It's not feeling an envy or resentment to other plants. It's just doing what it's supposed to do. It knows its purpose. And it's aligned with its purpose. But let's let these words ring true for us as never before and say, I believe in me. I believe in me because it doesn't do us any good to believe in God if we don't believe in ourselves because what God can do for us, God must do through us. God must do through us. So as we open our mind to that greater intelligence, open our mind to that greater power, open our mind to that greater spirit, it will infuse our mind, it will flash through our intuition, our intuitive mind, that something that we're to know, that something that we're to do, that something that we're to be, and we must act on it. We must believe in ourselves. We must believe in our ability to choose rightly, to be decisive, to be pacific and be definite. And no other way can the infinite respond to us affirmatively. As we study the way in which Jesus demonstrated the truth, we will find that he was always pacific and definite. He used the power of his mind, knowing that that power of his mind was part of the spirit part of the spirit that created all that we see, part of the spirit that was the intelligence and the power that created all in the universe. And he knew that we too could identify with that mind power that he identified with if we just allowed ourselves to do it. He always knew the point at which he expected and believed that God would be revealed and realized, and we can do this too. We can do this too. The great Emma, the mystical Emma Curtis Hopkins wrote, you may know all things by a little persistence. You may know all things by a little persistence. So what is she telling us? We must be persistent. Don't think that because you go and you sit in the silence for five minutes that everything in your life is going to change. You have to be willing to sit in the closet, go into that closet as Jesus tells us, sit and be still, fill your mind, let God in, listen for that still small voice as it tells us in the ancient wisdom, to incline your ear and come to me, incline your ear and come to me, that God is telling us to close off our, our thoughts about the world and incline our inner ear and listen for that still, small voice that will guide us, direct us, give us that idea, that, in, that way in which we can realize the wonderful life, the abundant life, the joyful life. But we must be willing to go to God, to renew our mind, to refresh our mind, to let God fill us up, so to speak, with all the spirit that's necessary for us to do and to be and to have those things that fulfill those good desires that have come to our awareness from that most high God that wants us to realize the greater good, experience the greater good, to have the greater good. So we must believe it. You may know all things by a little persistence, and McCurtis Hopkins wrote, therefore cultivate persistence cultivate persistence get a good idea of what you can do and carry it out keep this word i am satisfied with myself i am satisfied with myself so as we let ourselves be satisfied with ourselves we shall find ourselves we shall find ourselves more in tune with the infinite more in tune with the infinite good more aware that god is that God is seeking to tell us, to guide us, and direct us to those things that we want to do. <clears throat> Dr. Ernest Holmes tells us in his book, This Thing Called You, we can read, you should become accustomed to the thought that you are a divine being. Everything is a part of the one great whole. Everything in nature is an individualization of the one coordinating life, one law of being and one presence. The mind has become so filled with that which contradicts us that even the truth has to await our recognition. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. When you open this doorway, the divine guest, that's the Holy Spirit, will enter and, and commune with you. You must learn to become consciously aware of this presence, this power, and this intelligence that is God. You must be, 
Learn to become consciously aware that this divine presence, this divine power, this wholeness of truth, of love, and of reason, and of a sound mind is seeking to dwell within your mind. Instead of dwelling on negative thoughts, cause your mind to dwell on peace and joy. Know that the power of the invisible spirit is working in and through you now at this very moment. Lay hold of this realization with a, with a complete certainty and know that it's the truth. It has been written that the Christ is your Redeemer, also that Christ is within you. As we read in the ancient scriptures, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. You have been told to awaken that Christ that, you may, that it may give you light, Christ in you, the hope of your glory. You have been told to renew your mind by putting off the old, and by putting on the new, we can't put new wine into old wineskins. That's what Jesus was telling us. We must renew our mind, refresh it, transform it. So all these mystical statements refer to our spiritual nature. They were written by people who had experienced the illumination of conscious oneness with the infinite. Conscious oneness with the infinite. We've all experienced it. We've all experienced that moment in which... We know that there's something greater than what we see, that there's a power greater than anything that we see in the world, a power greater than anything we've experienced in the world. We know that's so. All people are a part of God because there's only one life, one God. That life is our life now. We are the image and the likeness of it. We are spirit having a human experience. God has clothed, God intelligence has clothed our spirit in human form. So that we can experience the gift of life on this planet earth now, only a few people have prepared their mind to receive this truth with all its meaning and with all its power with all its majesty and all its might but we can all become one of those people who have prepared their mind as emma curtis hopkins tells us you may know all things by a little persistence Therefore, cultivate persistence, cultivate persistence, and identify with the mind power of Jesus and know that that power is available to all of us. Just like he said, I am the light of the world, he said. Light, light, light means something that dispels the darkness, dispels the negative, dispels those negative thoughts in our mind. And then he looked out at his audience and he said, you too are the light of the world. And let your light so shine. Let the power of the Spirit, the intelligence of God, move through your mind, your heart, and your soul and feel that oneness with the life that you are a part of. Feel that oneness with the image likeness of God that you've been created in. Feel that oneness with all things good and begin to realize for yourself that whether you're living here or in the hereafter, that you are always in the presence of the presence of God. That you are always in the presence of the presence of God. There is no greater God in the hereafter than there is right here, right where we are. That's the truth that Jesus is trying to get the people to understand. And so we must begin to understand it. And we can understand it by inclining our ear and coming to God in the silence. Going into that closet, as Jesus said, shutting out the noise and the nonsense of the world and letting our mind be still as we listen for that still small voice that will thunder through our intuitive mind and give us the right idea the right realization the right comfort the right peace the right joy the right idea that will heal us prosper us and bless us so we must identify with that same mind power that same power of mind the mind being spirit that same power of the spirit jesus said if i don't go away the Comforter will not come to you. If I don't go away, the Comforter will not come to you. And he was telling us, if I don't go away, you will continue to look to me rather than open your mind, open your heart, open your soul to the Holy Spirit, the Comforter to come to you to give you that right idea that is yours, to give you the intelligence, the measure of intelligence necessary to expand your good, to enlarge your capacities, to have, to do, and to be, those greater things still and so it is amen we want to know and we want to believe we want to accept right now right where we are that we are identifying right now we're in tune with the infinite good we're in tune with god and just as jesus tells us we can do those greater things still let's open our mind and realize today 
that those greater things still is that the greatness of the Spirit seeking to enlarge our capacities to us, for us, as us. Because what God will do for us, God must do through us. That's the, that's the truth that Jesus is teaching us. That's the truth of the ancients. That's the truth that we all can realize. And as we realize that truth to a greater degree, that is the truth that will set us free, just as Jesus told us it would. And so it is. Amen. Once again, I want to thank you for being with me today. It's been my great pleasure to have you, and I hope you join me for my next broadcast right here on WKDI. AM 840 Radio. You can find the full radio schedule for The Way to a Wonderful Life at www.revbaitsontheradio.org. The Way to a Wonderful Life is broadcast live 